Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. We are at two-way door hinge adjustment central this morning, so you'll notice that this door isn't closing all the way. Let's give it a push. And it's performing better than it was this morning. I have actually oiled the hinges. But something I've noticed upon installation of these hinges, which uh, didn't occur to me at the time, they're actually upside down. So these are the Eclipse two-way hinges from Tool Station or Screwfix, Screwfix I think. And because this is a big heavy fire door, we've got one, two, three, four, five, supporting the weight basically, and six, counting the one at the bottom. And usually it's all right. But I've gone to adjust it this morning and I found it difficult because we've got some wear on some of these holes here. And that's because, um, unbeknownst to me, I've installed them upside down. So hopefully we'll be able to take them off, spin them around and, fingers crossed, get another couple of years worth of life out of them before we have to upgrade. Which is something that will have to happen soon. So I've removed the spring tensioners from the other side. They're basically just this little rod and hole assembly here, you pull it back, take the rod out and then this will rotate to loosen it off and as you can see it's taken all the slack off the door now. So now the door obviously won't close unless we push it upwards to take that weight back and then as it opens that way that's not a problem but at some point these hinges will fall forwards again. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing on this side and then what that will do is, in fact I could take the door off now in this position, but what I want to do is take all the hinges off of the door jam, rotate them on the door and then put them back up in that fashion. I think it will be a little bit easier for me to assemble. So I've got to take all the pins out of this side now. And to do that, they give you a little bar made out of really soft metal, which is probably no good realistically. So I just like to get a nice, sturdy, firm Allen key. Then we'll rotate that forwards. I shouldn't be doing this one-handed because I could lose an eye. And then hopefully, yeah, you see, this is tricky to get out because there's been a little bit of wear. So we'll probably come back to that one. Shall we try this one here? might be a little easier there we go that's come out and then we're gonna ee, one handed <laughs> that was awful just release the tension and then we'll just take that up with a little drill bit so we can then remove this I'm doing well one handed here oh that's just gonna snap back I can see it because it's uh, it's not got any tension on it, there we go. I can feel it wants to go but obviously it has got some wear and tear on it so these do need taking off and rotating in the correct direction. So I'm probably going to have to go and get some pliers to pull these little nubs out and then we'll take them off and spin them round. So I brought all of the hinges through into the workshop for a couple of reasons. One, to remove some of the pins that I just could not get out. And then two, I noticed that when they were mounted in this direction with the rotation pins at the bottom, the whole cylinder, shall we say, had come apart. And can you see that little, I'll just pop it on the side, that little indentation there, that actually lines up with a cutout on this section here. So this section... You see the top rotates, but that little collar in between that indentation and the top stays in one place. Well that is what we're tensioning against when we put this little, you know, uh, put our things in here, put our little lever in here and tension up, I can feel it going there, it's tensioning against that point. So these hinges being mounted upside down, all the weight is pulling down. And what it's done is it pulled that section out and allowed that point to rotate freely, basically making the spring tension null and voiding the whole thing. So keeping them that direction 
means that that isn't going to happen. And, you know, I think I put these doors up in haste when we were trying to open the restaurant back in 2019. And, uh, you know, something like that. You know, me being a man and not reading the instructions is easily overlooked. But I reckon I've resolved it and they feel quite nice and, you know, the... They're moving freely. I don't think that they're compromised at all, apart from maybe just a little bit of excessive wear on these little sections here. But I think that the mechanism can live with that. And we don't need to replace these just yet. So I'm hoping we get maybe another year or two out of them. They cost about 20 quid each, so it's not a fortune. But if you compare that with normal hinges that you'd buy for your door, I mean, you pay for one set, and that one set, set lasts almost the lifetime of the house, doesn't it, these days? So, or at least 50 years plus. So you'd expect, if you're going to have to buy all these, to get a little bit of life out of them. So I'm just going to pop these in my pocket, and we'll go back next door and continue the reassembly. I'm absolutely filthy now. So I've got... All the hinges assembled back on there. The chefs are in, so I've got to stay out of their way, otherwise they'll, I'll be in big trouble. So, replaced. Pins in the top. It closes really quite nicely, if you watch this. I'll stand back so you can get a view. It should stop just in the centre. And there we go. I'm happy with that. The only trouble is when we've got all the extraction fans on in the kitchen, it does pull the door in slightly. But um, we do have an intake fan as well, which probably might need upgrading a touch. But to be fair, in the summertime, we can just open the door at the top of the stairs, which is over there, just uh, kind of behind that bit. And then in the summer, did I say in the summer then? In the wintertime, we can do that, so we preserve heat in, in the restaurant area. And then in the summertime, we'll probably just let that happen because it'll pull some air through. So if we open one or two of these windows, We'll be pulling air through so it's nice and fresh in here and hopefully keeps it cool. Because we don't have any air conditioning in the pub and uh, well, we probably can't really afford to run any at the moment with how tight things are. So in order to make sure that the extraction and intake air, or makeup air as it's called, was in good enough nick, I've managed to clamber up the ladders and this is the intake so as you can see we've got plenty of intake. I've changed the filter on the end thinking maybe the filter was clogged and that was kind of preventing the air from coming in but looking at that it is a little bit cooked up but it doesn't look that bad at all really does it? So there's an indicator, indication of what we've got. That's the extractor. That big black fan there was quite expensive. That's what's doing all the work really. And then that's the intake. And behind that we've got a little intake fan which pulls air into the building via that filter. So I'm just gonna put the ladder away and then we're gonna get into the brewery and can some of the Five Pints Best Bitter. That's the next job. I'll probably measure this up as well while I've got it down here. You know what? There's loads left on that. I could turn that around and reuse it, but I'm not going to do. I'm going to measure it up and we'll order another one so we've got a spare in stock. 